subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 9th of March. Sheikh Hasina thanks India's Prime Minister Modi for evacuating Bangladeshis from war-hit Ukraine. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan warns no trust motion against him is opposition party's political death. And Afghan women say Taliban have taken away their hope motivation since seizing Kabul. And now for all the details. Under Operation Ganga to rescue Indian citizens from Ukraine's neighboring countries, nearly 20,000 Indians have been brought back by special flights so far since Russia attacked Ukraine two weeks ago. India has also rescued several other foreign nationals from the war-torn country. On Wednesday, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina thanked Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for rescuing Bangladeshi nationals stranded in Ukraine. A Pakistani student also expressed gratitude to India for rescuing her. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina praised her Indian counterpart Narendra Modi on Wednesday for rescuing nine of her country's residents under Operation Ganga from war-torn Ukraine. As part of its Operation Ganga evacuation effort, India has rescued trapped individuals, especially students, from numerous other countries since Russia attacked Ukraine two weeks ago. Notably, the Indian authorities have also rescued Nepalese and Tunisian students from Ukraine. Earlier, a Pakistani student, Asma Shafiq, who was also rescued by the Indian authorities, thanked the Indian Embassy in Kyiv and PM Modi for their support. Thankful to the embassy of, uh, Indian Embassy of Kyiv for supporting us all the way here as we were, we were stuck in very difficult situations and uh, also thanking the Prime Minister of India and thank you so much for supporting us and uh, hope we get home safely because of the Indian Embassy. India's Foreign Ministry on Tuesday announced that it had evacuated all Indian students from Ukraine's Sumi. Sumi is a hub of educational institutions and is home to a large number of international students. Under Operation Ganga to rescue Indian citizens from Ukraine's neighboring countries, about 18,000 Indians have been brought back by special flights so far, which were pressed in services since February 22. The humanitarian toll has increased amid Russian military operations in Ukraine that was launched on February 24. As per the United Nations, around 1.5 million refugees have fled Ukraine. The fifth edition of the National Security Advisor Level Colombo Security Conclave meeting began in Maldives' capital, Mali, on Wednesday. The two-day conclave is being attended by National Security Advisors and representatives from India, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Mauritius, Bangladesh and Seychelles. The High Commission of India in Maldives said in a tweet that India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval in his statement called for strengthening cooperation amongst maritime neighbours in the Indian Ocean region to address shared security challenges and as first responders. The Colombo Security Conclave was founded as a trilateral security framework between India, Sri Lanka and the Maldives with four pillars of security cooperation covering marine safety and security, human trafficking, counter-terrorism and cyber security. In news from Pakistan, a day after Pakistan's opposition parties moved a no-confidence motion against his premiership, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday said the opposition was now stuck and he has plans for them when the move against his government fails. Opposition parties have accused Khan of mismanaging the economy and poor governance. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan arrived on a day-long visit to Karachi in an effort to woo coalition parties, Mutahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan and the Grand Democratic Alliance, a day after the United Opposition submitted a no-confidence motion against his premiership. During the meeting with Mutahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan's leadership, Khan was assured of full support by the Karachi-based party. Later, Khan hit out at the United Opposition against their move, saying that they were now stuck and he has plans for them when the move against his government fails. 
Addressing PTI workers in Karachi, he said that the no-confidence motion would be the political death of the joint opposition. Turning his gun on to former President and Pakistan's People Party or PPP co-chairperson Asif Ali Zardari Khan said he was the next target. He also berated leader of the opposition in the National Assembly and PMLN leader Shahwaz Sharif calling him a boost polisher. Imran told his party workers that after winning the no-confidence motion, his government will take Zardari, Shahbaz and PDM leader Fazlur Rahman to jails where they should have been for a long time. On Tuesday, Pakistan's opposition parties moved a no-confidence motion accusing Khan of mismanaging the economy and poor governance in the toughest challenge he has faced since taking power in 2018. Moving on, residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir, including civil society members, held a protest recently over negligence of authorities towards rising cases of appendicitis and absence of healthcare facilities to treat the disease in the illegally occupied region. Locals have accused they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. Scores of locals and members of civil society held a protest recently in Pakistan and Minnesota Kashmir over negligence of authorities towards rising cases of appendicitis and absence of health care facilities to treat the disease in the illegally occupied region. The protesters blame fake operations to treat the condition of the appendix are going on in the Muzaffarabad by corrupt officials and demanded refund of hefty bills that are being charged from patients. They warned that if the government and the concerned authorities did not take immediate notice, they would intensify their protest. Locals in the illegally occupied region have long been accused they have been at the receiving end of the discriminatory policies of Islamabad that has failed to provide even basic facilities to them. In news from Afghanistan, ever since the Taliban took over Afghanistan from US-backed government in August, the country's new rulers have curtailed women's rights and freedoms. Sharing ordeal, Afghan women said the Taliban have taken away their hope and motivation with the restrictions they have imposed since coming to power. Afghan women said the Taliban have taken away their hope and motivation with the restrictions they have imposed since coming to power. Taliban seized power from the former US-backed government in August in a move that triggered deep concerns about a broader rollback of rights for women, journalists and others. Hasina Motasam, a student, called on women around the country to raise their voices to defend their rights. On Tuesday, as the world marked International Women's Day, local media reports said that Taliban did not allow gatherings to take place to mark the occasion. In a message, Taliban spokesperson Zebuhullah Mujahid said they were committed to according rights to all Afghan women, but it would be based on Sharia law. Under their previous rule from 1996 to 2001, the hardline Islamist Taliban barred women and girls from education. They say they have since changed. 
The wetlands in Pulwama district of India's Jammu and Kashmir is home to thousands of migratory birds. To create awareness about these wetlands and the migratory water birds, the Department of Wildlife Protection conducted an Asian water bird and other endemic bird census on Tuesday that witnessed participation from young volunteers and college students. To create awareness about the preserving the wetlands and water birds in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the Territory's Department of Wildlife Protection in collaboration with the Wildlife Conservation Fund conducted the Asian Water Bird Census on Tuesday in Pulwama District. The primary aim of taking the census was to identify the current status of these wetlands and check the population fluctuation of migratory water bird and other endemic birds during winter migration. The four wetlands situated in Chatham, Fashkuri, Manibuk, Krenchu of the Pampor area in Pulwama district is home to thousands of migratory birds. We have concluded that we have four the four wetlands in the census. Now we have seen how many birds are there. We have not done the whole count yet. Now we will do it easily. There are many species here which we have entered the data sheet. Young volunteers who participated in the project were trained on how to collect data samples about migratory birds by wildlife department. This census helps collect extra data every year on the number of migratory birds visiting the wetlands of the region and what happens next can be taken in the future to improve the number of birds. Birds ki jo aawaz hai wo kafi soothe karti hai hame jab hum unke bare mein sunte hai और काफी कलरफुल बर्ड्स भी आई है जो इस बार माइग्रेट करके आई है। Every year, migratory birds come to these wetlands through the Central Asian Flyway Zone to ward off the extreme cold of the summer homes. Bodh Gaya, the holy town in India's eastern Bihar state, is where Lord Buddha attained his enlightenment. Very soon, the town will see India's longest reclining Buddha statue as the construction is underway. The construction of India's longest reclining Buddha statue is underway in eastern Bodh Gaya city. Artists from eastern Kolkata city have been roped in to build the 100 feet long and 30 feet tall statue with fiberglass, which is expected to be completed by February 2023. Renowned sculptor Mintu Pal and his team of 22 artisans were commissioned to create the statue. Bodh Gaya, which receives around 100,000 pilgrims and tourists visit every year, is revered by the devotees since Lord Buddha is believed to have attained enlightenment here. Uh, Buddha got enlightenment on this place, Buddha, uh, Bodh Gaya. So, uh, who are respect to the Buddha? Every people from around the world, they come to pay respect to the Buddha at this uh, sacred enlightenment place of the Buddha. Uh, so, this time people also can uh, come to visit or um, pay respect to the Indian uh, biggest, uh, longest uh, reclined Buddha statue. A reclining image of Buddha or statue represents the Buddha during his last illness, about to enter Parinirvana, the stage of great salvation. Buddha passed into eternity or Mahaparinirvana when he was 80 years old in a state of meditation in Kushinagar in eastern Uttar Pradesh state. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Sheikh Hasina thanks India's Prime Minister Modi for evacuating Bangladeshis from war hit Ukraine. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan warns no trust motion against him is opposition party's political death. And Afghan women say Taliban have taken away their hope motivation since seizing Kabul. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन